So Langgraph Studio was a huge addition to the Langgraph Langchain ecosystem because it allowed us to basically create LLM applications without having to start from scratch. But when we start creating AI agents with Langchain or Langgraph, a lot of times we find ourselves doing the same things over and over again, simply because we already have a template or a process in place. For example, if we are creating a RAG application, a lot of the times we will find ourselves doing the same thing in terms of reading the documents, embedding the text that we have inside of it. Then we are going to take the inputs of the user, take the relevant information from the documents that we have already embedded. And then of course, answer from that relevance context that we have provided. These steps that I have just described are going to be the same with some minor changes or different RAG applications. So therefore having some kind of agent that will help us create land graph agents would be a great addition to the land graph ecosystem. This is where land graph engineer comes in. It is basically a studio to create land graph applications, not just LLM applications. So today we are going to see how we can use it to create, for example, a RAG application that basically going to take any PDF file and will be able to answer questions from it. With that being said, let's jump to my screen. So this is the interface of Landgraph Engineer. You will find the link in the description below. You can access it and start playing around with it. So here, as you can see, we have multiple agents that are going to be basically interacting with each other in order to create land graph apps that we can basically just copy paste and start playing around with. The first agent or node is going to be gather requirements. And this node will basically ask all the right questions in terms of what you want to create. So if you don't give enough information about the app that you want to create, it would ask you either one time or multiple times about all of the details that you want to add to your application. This will be passed into a draft answer, which is basically the most important agent that will draft the answer. It is an agent that is created and fine-tuned in order to give specific answer in a specific format. It's generating Python code and basically does all of the work in terms of creating the application that we ask Langgraph engineer to create. This will be checked inside of a check agent to see if the answer respects the format. Now, Langgraph says that they want to add more checks to these agents to basically see if the imports are correct and to even run the code. And I think this is actually very important. It will make this application so much more robust. And then this will, of course, go to the critique where we actually going to see if the code is well written or not. And it can go back either to the raft answer if it did not pass the critique agents. If it did, we just basically go to the end and that is it. All right. It starts with create a rag app. Of course, this is not enough information. So the gather requirements will be triggered and it will start asking me about have any specific nodes and workflow logic for this rag app. And here I have two options. Either I say no, and it will basically give me a generic scaffolding for a rag application, or I give as many information as possible. And that will help it actually create the whole application without me having to basically touch the code later on. So here, let's just give it enough information so that it creates the whole application. Let's say I want my application to read a local PDF document, then embed it using OpenAI API. And then I want to query against these embeddings and finally output an answer in the terminal. So let's see if this is going to give it enough information in order for it to basically just start creating the application. That is good. So as you can see here, the getter requirements have triggered the draft answer and then we will have an answer. This is where it's going to take most of the time. The check is usually so fast. Then the critique, I think it's going to be passing and then it will just basically go to the end. And that is basically it. So to see the answer that it has gave us, we can just go to output and here we can just copy paste the answer. So this is our RAG application. And from here, we will be able to first create a virtual environment. Now we will install all of the libraries that we need. Good. So let's clear this out. And this is the PDF that we're going to be using. It's an employment contract. And as you can see here, it has multiple sections of the employment contract. And we are going to be asking questions about all of this information that we have here. So because I have OpenAI embeddings, I of course need an OpenAI API key. So let's go ahead and create a new file that's env. And here we are going to have our OpenAI API key. So let's go to platform.openai.com. Let's go to a project. Then from the projects, we're going to go to dashboard. And here we're going to go to API keys. And from here, we are basically going to be able to create an API key. So I've already created one. So let me copy paste it inside of here. So that is my OpenAI API key. So let me save it here. And then of course, here we have prom.env import load 
env and then here we need to initialize the load.env function so let's do this now let's run it and see what's going to happen and we have an error so let's go ahead and see where the error is all right, so it took me a second to actually solve all the problems that I had in this code, but let's go through them together. So first of all, we are going to read from employment agreements that we have here. Then we are going to add that text into the state. After that, we are going to use OpenAI embeddings in order to embed it. And of course, we already have the .env and we added the log.env for this. So no problem for embed documents. Then we are going to add the embeddings into the state. After that, we are going to give our query about the documents into the query inputs. And then we are going to query against the embeddings that we have. And then we're going to put it inside of the relevant text to keep only the relevant part of our documents. And after that, we are going to generate the answer and put it in the state dictionary. After that, we had the output answer node. I don't think we need it because it was only to print the answer. So we don't really need this. So we just delete it and let's delete its node and the part where it was basically inside of the graph. After that, I found out that you can solve the problem of adding the key. You basically have to initialize the state with empty elements and then you are going to give that empty elements inside of the app.invoke and this is how you can basically solve the problem. And after that, I will print the answer. So let's go ahead and run the project. Here it will give me answer your query and I will say what is the type of this document and let's see what it's going to say as an answer type of these documents as an employment agreement okay so let's run it again and let's ask it who is the employee and the employer and how much is the salary in the agreement and as you can see the employee is this person the employer is this company and the salary mentioned is a base salary and a gross annual rate of 175 for the first 12 months of the employment. And of course, if we go to the employment agreement and we go to the salary clause, we will find that the company shall pay for the first 12 months an annual rate of $175,000. But if you actually read through this clause, you're going to see that there is a progressive salary if the person stays on the company multiple years. So for the second 12 months, we have 195 and for the third 12 months we have 215 so let's see if it's going to be able to pick up on that so let's ask it clarify the progression of the salary uh, that's clarify not clarity but let's see if it's going to be able to answer outline is as follows in the first 12 months employment 175 and the uh, extended in the second 12 months we have 195 and then we have the third 12 months which is going to be 215 and we have an annual compensation that we didn't see and other information that it has been able to pick up. So that's basically it. We have been able to create a PDF RAG application in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And from here, we can add as much logic as we want if we have multiple documents. So that is actually very impressive. A lot of people would actually benefit from this since they don't have to basically create the scaffolding every time. If they already have templates of what they want to create, they can actually fine tune it and add it inside of the draft. And this template can be followed every time in order for them to be more comfortable with their land graph applications. So that is basically it. If you guys want me to go more in depth into land graph and land chain, just let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.